what's up guys gun here week two is here before we get all the way diving into week two though for nfl on fanduel DraftKings, yahoo wherever you play let's take a little peek at week one uh review the process a little bit uh just kind of relive some uh, picks and plays that maybe came through didn't come through why or why not and then of course give away uh some of the monday rituals um first of all every monday we're gonna do a 20 dollars paypal giveaway you just got to be subscribed to the channel, hit the thumbs up on the videos, and any video we post this week, leave a comment on the video. Each comment uh, will be put into the Streamlabs uh, um, raffle generator, uh, and that's how we'll select who wins 20 bucks. Uh, this week's winner, let me click it, is Daniel Perez. So I'll put a screenshot on the screen. Uh, I guess I should point out, I don't know, the fancy editing. Daniel, uh, leave a comment, I guess, below. Um, and uh, reach out to me. Um, maybe send me your, if you have PayPal, send me your PayPal me link. Uh, and I'll uh, get you hooked up, right? Uh, if you guys want to win 20 bucks, next Monday in the week two, either the week two review video or whatever the first week two video is, we'll put out also on Mondays. We're going to make it a habit of showing love to the subscribers or the members, the Gundacker Gaming members uh, at the legend level. Uh, so shout out to the pioneers, the pioneers of the legend level. There's still time to be a pioneer, uh, but people that joined the, the uh, channel membership program, Hayden Ronzo, Cesar Flores, Adam Shockley, those cats all signed up on the legend level, get access to a, a Gundecker Gaming NFL spreadsheet with some quick reference stats, um, a value chart for uh, player pricing across the different sites uh, and stuff like that. And then of course you get access to the Gundecker Gaming Discord with uh, exclusive access to those channels. So we're still building that community if you wanna be part of that. Uh, sign up uh, by clicking that join button below. And uh, I'm gonna be doing a lot of uh, cool stuff for them, right? We're gonna be doing exclusive videos, of the Stratterday sessions, uh, the legend submitted um, ideas, topics of focus uh, for where you want to, or, or just stuff that you want, maybe my spin on, whether it be how to stack or what to look for, blah, 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 what, like whatever the legends uh, input. We have special YouTube community posts that only the legends and above can see. Uh, so if you guys want to be part of that, uh, hit that join button below. If you want more information on that, there's a channel membership uh, video that's probably linked in the description below as well. Uh, and then of course, all these videos are brought to you by RunDFS.com. That's the place where we don't just play DFS, we run DFS. Uh, that is a uh, membership uh, site that also features a lot of my uh, proprietary input and stuff like that. Uh, a lot more stuff in the rundfs.com VIP spreadsheet, uh, including 24 seven uh, premium discord access for the rundfs server and pre-lock voice chat. Uh, not only just for football, we did a football group study on Saturday night and a pre-lock voice chat and even actually live streamed on this channel Sunday. Might try that again this week. Um, depending on what you guys think. Um, but we also do daily baseball coverage. So those of you that, that came back from DFS, you maybe you want some scratch over the weekend. You want to play some uh, baseball. Uh, usually this, usually when uh, NFL is here, um, or even when there's overlap between like NBA and baseball, uh, there was a free money Tuesday uh, kind of thing for a while. Maybe we see some softer fields tomorrow from a lot of casuals trying to play baseball for the first time. So if you guys want to take advantage of that, Come sign up. I don't think there's many uh, beginner-friendly research aids than what we have at RunDFS.com. The MLB VIP spreadsheet is super, super strong. And I've personally watched a lot of guys that were just NBA or just basketball, uh, excuse me, just NBA or just NFL um, players use that spreadsheet, learn what to look for, and start making their own lineups and, and, and branching out and they become really, really successful. And like, that's, that's the facts. That's the gospel, man. And I know a lot of people can vouch for that. Um, anyway, enough of the plugs, right? Enough of the plugs. So if you guys want to be on run DFS, uh, the weekend promotion for last week did expire, uh, but new prices are up. Uh, I believe if we look at it, I think it's, I think the month passes at 
70 okay 70 for the month that's actually really good it's usually at 100 uh 40 bucks for two weeks and 25 bucks for the week so that includes daily voice chats you know less than five bucks a day daily spreadsheet access and uh my, my personal player pool stuff like that anyway most of you guys already know uh what it is right you guys that have been to the channel you know for a while anyway let's go open up my uh picks and plays from week one the nfl Spreadsheet. This is the the spreadsheet that you guys would get access to with a RunDFS.com membership. Uh, I tier my favorite plays in my player pool, my favorite groups and stuff like that. Uh, so here's what we did: open up the book. All about transparency, right? Uh, for week one, my tier one quarterback Lamar Jackson. Really not anything cute here in the tier one. CMC, Dalvin Cook, and Boston Scott. Uh, wide receiver Devontae Adams was my favorite play on the entire slate. That worked out. Michael Thomas did not. Chris Godwin did not. Uh, and tight end George Kittle. So George Kittle had the snaps, uh, did not have the performance. Uh, and then defense-wise, my, my top-tier defense was the Patriots. Uh, so if I, you know, I limp away here with uh, Lamar Jackson, Devontae Adams. Those guys set a high table. I do want to let you guys know that overnight Saturday, there were some really rising, elevated concerns about the uh, Arizona and San Francisco game playing. Uh, if you guys have seen some pictures from over the weekend, uh, I believe the wild uh, wildfires and uh, air quality concerns. Like there was a legitimate conversation uh, that that game might get moved to a different site. Uh, and because of that, you know, I'm working on my lineups at one, two in the morning. I was thinking, man, this feels a lot like just 2020 DFS. Uh, uh, if you guys play baseball, you know how this year there's been a lot of seven inning double headers or games that get postponed. NBA, we've seen uh, postponements over uh, just really wonky stuff in the last two years, uh, ceiling leaks and stadium closure, stuff like that. So like in my head, I was like, man, there's probably a real chance this game gets moved. So what I ended up doing was moving a large part of my action from the all day Sunday main slate to the Sunday early. And the reason I did that, because I thought if the game got moved, it would probably get moved to Monday afternoon at a, maybe like a nearby college stadium or something like that, or even no Levi stadium. Uh, and I just didn't want that money hanging around for an extra day. You know, I play a lot of sports, uh, uh, baseball, and wanted to get into the showdown. So I just figured, you know what? The Arizona and uh, San Francisco game could go so many ways. There's a lot of heavy hitters on paper. Um, I just didn't want to, I just, uh, I feel like I can neutralize some of that. And I knew the Saints and Bucks game could be very variant uh, because we knew Mike Evans was likely going to be a decoy at best, um, matching up with Marshawn, uh, with, uh, with uh, Lattimore. Um, and I knew that if that game, even if that game shot out, there could be so many different ways and ranges of outcomes for it to shoot out. So I was like, man, if I just put a lot of money on the early and just, you know, watch those games off, I'm, I, I think I'm okay with that. I think I can justify the risk because of the air quality. So that's what I ended up doing. Middle of the night, a lot of my money went straight to early onlys on FanDuel, on DraftKings. And I'm glad because it, it worked out for me and I definitely would have, um, had a lot more Michael Thomas <laughs> at, at the end of the day. Anyway, moving on to my tier twos here. Uh, I think my tier twos, uh, if I'm if I'm not being results orientated, uh, Cam Newton, Drew Brees, Matt Ryan, loved them all. Uh, Alvin Kamara, Josh Jacobs, uh, both were fine. Josh Jacobs was massive. I think he was he was the highest scoring uh, running back on on the slate, 35.9 fantasy points. Uh, uh, Dalvin Cook, 21.8. I'll take it this week, right? Not too many 20 pluses uh, at running back and wide receiver. So at the end of the day, I, I would take that Dalvin Cook, even though I had him as a tier one. And Alvin Kamara uh, had a touchdown uh, reverse. So he went from, you know, another okay play, 23.7, all things considered. Uh, but he could have been a great play if that touchdown would have stand, right? So I'm happy with that. In the wide receiver pool, A-Rob, Odell, T.Y. Hilton, Keenan Allen, Julio Jones, Deshaun Jackson. Um, I ended up moving Calvin Ridley up in ownership just because uh, when I took out the, um, the afternoon games, I just had way more Ridley and I was all over that Falcon Saint uh, Seahawks uh, stack. So Calvin Ridley probably ended up ownership wise for me a tier two uh, and that worked out, right? Uh, Odell Beckham, we'll talk about him. 
because the 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 results for Odell wasn't great, uh, but the process was there, right? Uh, and the process was still correct. Odell Beckham had 10 targets in week one. And I think he drew two penalties, a pass interference, uh, which got them uh, downfield. So uh, if the targets, gonna, you give me 10 targets for a five to 6K Odell Beckham, I'm going to take it. We all knew that the Ravens matchup wasn't great, uh, but I don't regret that pick uh, because 10 target plays are just... Um, or just that I'm, I'm betting on on volume and opportunity and that was there uh another guy i ended up with was quintez cephas in the middle of the night uh with kenny galladay out i decided cephas was too cheap to not have a hankering for i had him at one percent and everything but I look at my top lineup on uh DraftKings. this is the hundred dollar millie maker uh, I had Quintus Cephas at 0.6% owned. So he's listed as a... I think he was a late tournament play. Yeah, he was a late tournament play after I made my pool. 0.6% um, owned. It made too much sense. He also maybe didn't pan out results-wise. Three receptions on 43 receiving yards. But like Odell, he got a lot of targets. He had, he had 10 targets himself. Uh, so I'll be watching that going forward. If Kennedy Galladay is out, uh, I'll take another shot on Cephas. And there was a, a couple of overthrown throws to Cephas uh, by Matthew Stafford. Um, Hayden Hurst, I think he was one of the, the league leaders for tight ends in routes run. Uh, the target share wasn't there. But if you're going to run that many routes, eventually I think Matt Ryan's going to start looking to him. So I'm not going to get away from that. I had him as a tier two. Uh, Darren Waller, Jack Doyle, a tight end was tight end, right? Uh, Dallas Goddard, Mark Andrews, the only guys at uh, 20 plus, and then TJ Hawkinson, David Njoku, uh, Thomas, OJ Howard. Like, it, it was whatever. So I was fine with having a decent chunk of Jack Doyle, 7.9. What are you going to do? George Kittle was a horrendous uh, results play, but I think uh, if I look at snap counts, George Kittle played 61 offensive snaps. That's 98.39%. If George Kittle is going to play 98% of snaps and be a Jimmy Garoppolo uh, target, I'm like you just have to take shots on that. So I can't be too uh, upset with that. Uh, and then Mark Andrews. So he ended up at tier three. Uh, but after seeing what happened uh, in the game, um, Mark Andrews played 71% of offensive snaps. Uh, and the targets were there for him. He had uh, tight end targets. Andrews, he had six targets, red zone looks, you know, uh, Lamar will look his way. I think going forward, that makes me feel a little bit better about rostering him. Uh, last year, he just thought of the, the timeshare there um, for the Ravens tight end situation. So uh, I'll probably be holding Andrews in higher regard going forward. Uh, and then, of course, tier, tier four punts. Gronk and Hawkinson. Hawkinson, like we said, ended up being a great play. Gronk, not so much. But I didn't get too um, too thin at tight end in my player pool. Uh, and then my tier three wide receivers, all of them um, make a lot of sense, you know, pre and post flop. Uh, Tyler Lockett, Calvin Ridley, Julian Edelman, Marvin Jones. Jones was one of the slate leaders in snap counts. Uh, obviously had plenty of looks. Ridley was an amazing play. And then Lockett was just, I was so enamored with that game stack. So if I go to my, my game notes here uh, and go over, I'm not going to read every game breakdown, but if you guys want something like this uh, going forward, uh, this is part of the weekly spreadsheet at rundfs.com. Well, you see, I, I like to list my game interest and I had it as high. Uh, I said I will have a bunch of Falcon-centric stacking groups featuring Julio. Calvin Ridley and new tight end Hayden Hurst. It stands to reason that all of them will hit in tournaments, but I definitely, uh, but this definitely seems like one of the QB two pass catcher spots for me in tournaments. So what I meant like by that is uh, you see a lot of positive correlation in, uh, especially like first place Millie makers. Uh, there's a lot of quarterbacks with two of his pass catchers, whether it be a running back, two receivers, or a tight end. Uh, so I made a pool, and I specifically set it to any lineup with Matt Ryan has to have two of this group of people. Uh, and that worked out really well. Uh, and then, of course, with the Seahawks, I did a similar thing, but I made a rule to run it back with at least one of a Lockett, a Metcalf, a Carson, something like that, right? 
Uh, Seattle signed tight end Greg Olson, but they've consistently leaned on multiple tight ends in the last three years to vulture each other, and Luke Wilson still exists. So I think Olson did find the end zone, but neither were anything you had to have. Uh, and then, yeah, I list my favorite plays from that game. So that game worked out. If I looked at my top lineup from uh, the Millie Maker, the $100 Millie Maker, um, not the, the $5. I'm going to go through all the $5 ones. Uh, but it was a Matt Ryan Falcons lineup. It had Matt Ryan, uh, Calvin Ridley, Hayden Hurst. So it was one of those two pass catcher lineups with Devontae and a, you know, a bunch of my tier ones here, right? Dalvin Cook, Boston Scott, and then a tier two and Alvin Kamara. And then I, I punted a lot of Jets defense. Um, Redskins were the, the defense play and they were cheaper, but... Uh, otherwise, like this lineup is super solid, and this is true to my player pool, player pool, and my core. Uh, and on Fanduel, kind of the same thing here. My top uh, early only uh, in in twenty max or twenty entry, uh, Matt Ryan, um, Calvin Ridley in the flex, and then Todd Gurley. So I, I set it to have at least two of those players. Uh, this one somehow did not have Devonte Adams, uh, which it, it's so weird how that works out, right? Like you have so many lineups and then you have your highest owned player who's the best play on the slate doesn't end up in your top lineup. That's so crazy to me. Uh, but my second top lineup probably had him, right? I think I had a little less Adams on Fandle just because of you know the PPR and the 100 yard bonuses and stuff like that not being uh, as prevalent. Um, and Devontae Adams had two of the top three or four most improbable catches on the slate. So. That's, I, I'm not going to call that luck either because Aaron Rodgers has been threading needles for a long time. Uh, but the same concept though on, on Fando. Matt Ryan, uh, Hayden Hurst, Ridley again. Uh, this one had Josh Jacobs as well, CMC. Uh, I'll talk about D-Jax though. Uh, Deshaun Jackson, if you guys had him, uh, he was one of my favorite value plays. Uh, I, I, I just thought sub 5K with uh, Alshon Jeffrey out. I didn't want to say can't miss a revenge game. It was just so cheap that I thought opportunity cost was too low. We've seen his history. know his upside. And then it appeared in game that he got injured and he started missing plays. And, you know, I, I, I as a spectator, figured there's injury had to be the only reason he wouldn't end the game, right? No Jeffrey. They were already light at, at receiver. He tweeted yesterday that it had nothing to do with injury and he was fine. So I don't know what the story is there. Uh, but I, I had him as a tier two, and he was one of my highest owned players as well uh, at sub 5K on DraftKings. Uh, so he kind of let me down. What can you do? Uh, is he not in my, my top lineup over here? No, he's probably in all my bottom lineup. So um, any other top uh, some of my high owned bust? Uh, not that I can think of. Anyway. I'm going to go look at my uh, favorite groups here. So, obviously, I love the Packers, Jones, and Devontae Adams. Uh, knowing what I know now, Aaron Jones actually led the slate in a uh, percentage of stacked boxes. If you guys use NextGen Stats from nextgenstats.nfl.com uh, and sort it for uh, ball carriers. Let's see if I can... Uh, pull that up on stream here. If I go rushing, let me move it to the main screen. Uh, they have this thing called eight plus defenders in the box. You shorted by highest to lowest. Uh, Aaron Jones saw eight plus defenders in the box for 43.75% of plays. Uh, and obviously that helped Aaron Rodgers hook up with uh, Devontae Adams a little bit more, but it was a little tougher on Aaron Jones. What are you going to do? Uh, and the, the Falcons, I love that. The Seahawks worked out really well. Chris Carson was a fantastic play. Uh, Eagles, not so much. Boston Scott, value running back. I feel like every year, every week, there's a value running back that very, very seldom comes through. And this week, it was Boston Scott. Um, I, I'm a little less salty about this one because this isn't one of those times where I dropped everything I was doing at the running back position to go play Boston Scott. I was literally on Miles Sanders. I, I did the running back video last week, and I was talking about. I was like, "Yeah, Miles Sanders, got everything you want. You know, home favorite, blah blah blah." So when he's out, why wouldn't I love his backup too? And it just didn't work out. What are you gonna do? Uh, Saints side: Drew Brees, Alvin Kamara, Michael Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders. 
Saints that just that, uh, other than Kamara and who wasn't even like needed to win a tournament, right? Michael Thomas uh, had one of the uh, most anomalous outcomes, right? Uh, and I think that game that game could be the foundation for a lot of overreactions uh, when it comes to either team's defense, either team's quarterback play. Um, but I, I'm, you know, Michael Thomas has been doing what Michael Thomas does for so long. I'm going to chalk that one up to variance. I got to believe Drew Brees and Thomas will uh, get it back together and the volume will come back. So what are you going to do there? Chargers, um, nothing exciting there. Ravens worked out. Um, one thing about the Ravens that I didn't love was the Mark Ingram um, performance. He only had like two fantasy points. Um, J.K. Dobbins. I think had two touchdowns. Somehow I ran into a J.K. Dobbins guy in season long. And I'm not mad that he drafted J.K. Dobbins. I'm just like, man, how did you get there in week one? Um, but he did. So he got a pair of touchdowns. Uh, but the rest of this um, group worked out uh, because Lamar Jackson, uh, Marquise Brown, Mark Andrews. This is one of those uh, stacks where I just said handcuff him to one. And I ended up with very little Ingram as the handcuff there. So it didn't hurt me too much, but process wise i expected a little bit more out of ingram and i believe he was like 10 plus percent owned in a lot of my contests on the early only so uh, we're gonna do rivers hilton doyle marlon mack mack got injured naheem hines played like 50 percent of snaps and was going off ppr a lot of hype on taylor this week rightfully so um what are you gonna do there so my highest owned groups here um the falcons had a ton of Devontae and aaron Rodgers. um and yeah, I really can't over complain. Um, if I had to look at some people that I played this in week one and say, hey, was I just straight up wrong about this guy? <sighs> Deshaun Jackson, I guess is probably one, right? If it was an injury, then what was it? Like, was it behavioral? Um, you know, I, I, was it just not part of the game plan on a team that didn't have their wide receiver one? Mm -hmm. uh, Hayden Hurst didn't perform, but he ran uh, so many routes. Uh, that I believe that's just, you know, an anomaly off of a one week sample size. Like I believe those are coming. Uh, George Kittle putting up single digits with the amount of snaps that he played. Uh, gotta believe that'll uh, come back. Eckler, I guess Eckler's target share is a little bit worrisome and same with CMC. So maybe those are two things I'm looking at, but process wise, I don't feel like I was way off on anything in, in particular off of basically no sample size on on much of it a lot of it was guessing so i'm okay with the results um i also want to look at you know my worst lineups on each site um just to be uh completely transparent uh so on fandle if i go to my dead last my personal last place lineup in terms of you know, the worst one in my bunch uh, it was a lamar jackson lineup the aforementioned mark ingram i mentioned he was over 10 percent. he was this one had Josh Jacobs, Marquise Brown. Um, Brown had 100 plus yards. So if you played him on DraftKings, you know, that bonus got you there, that PPR got you there. And this is a big uh, exhibit on the difference between um, some players and how I grade them on one side versus FanDuel. Uh, think about five receptions and 100 yards. That is a, that's like a five to six point swing right there, right? Five receptions, uh, that's two and a half points on FanDuel, 101 yards, that's just 10 points. Uh, on DraftKings, that's uh, that's what, eight points right there, eight extra points on this. So you had to, you know, weight it a little bit higher or a little bit lower on FanDuel. I used to go super, super running back centric. Terry McLaurin also maybe was a little bit let down, especially if, if you knew that the Washington Redskins scored 27. I bet Terry McLaurin comes in a little bit higher on than he was. Uh, he was already 14%, right? Uh, anything else in particular that was super worrisome? Maybe the Colts defense was a little bit dragging. Uh, other than that, though, I, I feel like mo most of the the stuff that played out was, wasn't too off base for me. And a lot of the duds in my lineups, the Odell Beckhams, the Quintess Cephas's, uh, guys like that, I can still say they had the targets, right? The volume was there. And I'd go right back to the well next week uh, on these guys. Uh, what's my worst DraftKings lineup from the early the other day? It was a Zach Ertz, which I think he had like the first touchdown on the slate. Uh, it ended up not even being the best tight end play on his team uh, by a mile. But it was another Lamar Jackson-Ingram combo. Marlon Mack got injured. Uh, Mar Marlon Mack's another guy that was a 
Uh, I think he was the largest favorite on the slate, or the running back for the largest favorite on the slate. So I just process says, hey, we should probably look at that. He was almost 12% owned there. Uh, T.Y. Hilton, yikes. Marvin Jones, yikes. I wasn't even that in love with Marvin Jones. Um, so I, I was under the field at 19%. Uh, but yikes. Deshaun Jackson, we've already talked about that. He was pretty, he had to be one of the highest owned receivers at 21%. Um, and yeah, so I guess this, this was my worst. Uh, and of course, my top lineup, 203.6 points. Uh, finished top 250 in the big, uh, I think it was the early only $3. Uh, it, it was fine. Uh, you know, I, I, I historically don't love playing anything but a running back in the flex, but I thought on this slate, there was enough high upside at receiver uh, that Adams was just somebody I had to have and be extremely bullish on. And the fact that I got Devontae Adams 28% on the early only is just nuts. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that's going to happen again going forward, right? Uh, anyway, that's that's the review on my notes and stuff from, from week one. If you guys leave a comment, you'll be entered into that PayPal giveaway next Monday. Got a whole lot more videos and content coming this week. All of the legends, if you join uh, the channel membership and get the legend stuff, look for the community post. I'm going to be asking you guys what kind of strategy, strat I call it strat strater day, Saturday strategy, what kind of strater day videos you guys want uh, to start that series off. Uh, it could be any sport. Uh, and, I, and I don't mind double recording this week just as like an extra thank you and get you guys kickstarted. So check that out. We'll also have a Gundacker gaming spreadsheet. That'll just be some quick reference stats for you guys to check out. Uh, that will not have my full breakdown notes and stuff like that, but it'll have something that's, you know, fun to have uh, in addition. And as a thank you for your sub uh, membership, right? Um, anything else I want to talk about from week one? I would just say if you had a bad week one, understand that there was some bad breaks here and there right uh the michael thomas thing that is so different um if we look at overall scoring there wasn't a whole lot of 20 pluses at the receiver position they were super stealing and, and by the way um Thielen and Devontae adams caught two of the top like six most uncatchable passes on the slate too so uh there was a little bit of luck but it's it's not it's not that crazy um i'm going to have more content in the in probably today and tomorrow uh, i'm gonna do a fandle look and a DraftKings look at uh some core plays i don't know that the the daily breakdown of each position is going to be a thing this week the numbers on those videos last week weren't great so i just feel like maybe i gotta be more trendy with the video topics or or match what people are searching a little bit more uh so probably just do like a core plays video for each or a first look video for each uh so look out for that otherwise i appreciate you guys stopping by let me know how you did in week one who came through for you who surprised you and who let you down uh i will see you guys in the next video as always i love you uh good luck god bless Go win some money. Daniel, don't forget to uh, hit me up with that PayPal. Love you. Uh, see you guys in the next video.